How's it going guys? It is Chad here from Lootoons coming to you with a very much requested review on The Killing Joke. Um, I wasn't going to review this movie, but you guys sent me so many tweets, which by the way, you can follow me on Twitter uh, right there. You guys sent me so many tweets to review this movie that I just had to do it. So we are going to jump in and check out the review of the movie. And also a very strange realization I had about the ending of the movie. Um, I learned that the ending of the graphic novel and movie are both um, very contested points, but I had an even weirder realization about that contested point. So um, let me elaborate and let's get into the review. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't got footage from the film, so we're gonna have to settle with some iPhone screen grabs. Now, before I get into my interpretation of the ending, I'm just gonna do a quick little overall review of the movie. Quick note, I am not including The Killing Joke in every animated movie of the year, despite the fact that it did see a limited theatrical release, and I will elaborate on that should you be interested in my review of The Little Prince. So all in all, I actually didn't really care for this one too much, which really shocked me for two reasons. Reason one is because the DC animated films are usually so awesome. Red Hood, Flashpoint, Justice League War, all movies I really enjoyed. And to boot, DC animated movies have put Marvel animated movies to absolute shame. Now, reason two is because The Killing Joke is like one of the most revered Batman books I've ever heard of. As someone who never really read DC comics, my DC fandom and knowledge has always been tethered to its animated stuff, but even still, I had always heard throughout the years that The Killing Joke is amazing. You'd always hear it mentioned in YouTube videos about comics and stuff, but even still I didn't know really what the exact plot of it was. I only knew one thing going in, that it was widely considered the best Joker origin story or the most popular one, which sounded very fascinating to me so I was excited to see how that would play out. But the Joker origin story in the film, which I actually understand is pretty close to the book, really just fell flat in my opinion. I learned through watching this movie that the Joker seems much cooler to me when his origin is unknown entirely, or perhaps just frequently lied about. Now, after the film, I certainly realized why this story is so talked about. There's a lot of heavy stuff in there, from Batman and Batgirl having a sex scene, to a pretty horrible act committed onto Barbara Gordon by the Joker and his goons, including but not limited to the incident causing her paralysis. I use the word incident lightly. It's true, there's lots of intense stuff in this movie, but generally it's a really small story. The scale doesn't seem quite as big, which is interesting and actually very welcome as far as I'm concerned. Not every superhero thing needs to be about a giant laser shooting into the sky, but even considering that, uh, as I understand, the graphic novel is a pretty short book, and it kind of feels like maybe it's better suited to live there. Not to say that we can't tell smaller stories about superheroes in animation, but for this one, uh, something wasn't connecting for me. The movie is also rated R. Ooh, an animated Batman movie rated R. Surely this will drum up some buzz. And of course it did. Plenty of buzz, including a hashtag bat rape, which I saw in regards to the uh, Barbara Gordon Batman sex thing. I not really want to get into that. Um, I don't think it's worthwhile, but um, these kinds of uh, heavy issues that uh, the movie does have within it is probably why I had so many requests to review it, so here we are. But to me, just because more serious or adult stuff happens in the movie, that doesn't make it better. Now, of course, hearing Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill back is always going to be incredible. Tara Strong too, of course. Um, but I think the very best thing about this movie is the Joker has much more depth and various layers to play with, so Hamill brings the classic Joker we know, but with even more gravitas. So that was worth the $4 rental price alone, uh, in my opinion. Outside of that, the art was less impressive than past DC films, the animation was choppier, and the whole damn thing just had a really dull look to it. Tons of browns. I mean, I know there were loads of flashbacks set in like a sepia tone, but even the present day stuff was also loads of browns and dull grays, which I'm just not used to when watching a Batman property. I mean, I recognize Batman as a dark um, kind of thing with, with Gotham being a dark place, but 
I even took a look at the source material, which was colored beautifully with loads of depth, but the visuals from this one just were very unappealing to me and had me a bit bored visually speaking. So let's move on to the ending, which is what I'm really most excited about. At the very end of the story, Batman tries to reason with the Joker one last time, offering to get him help and giving the Joker one last shot at redemption. The Joker ponders it, but ultimately declines and tells Batman one last joke, which Batman slowly and kind of creepily begins to laugh at. And then slowly they both begin to laugh boisterously together, and the movie ends. So after I see this, I thought the ending was pretty clear and I was actually really impressed. Wow, the Joker finally beat Batman. A few different times in the film, we see Joker victims turned into these smiling zombie clown corpse things. It's actually something that the Joker's done tons of times in animated stories and in the comics a bunch, I'm sure. So my natural reaction to this last moment was using some invisible airborne toxin, the Joker tells a final joke, getting Batman to laugh as the toxin takes hold and he begins his transformation into some smiling, laughing, dead corpse, thus dealing the final killing joke, the joke that finally killed Batman. You're probably laughing right now, but this actually seemed obvious to me. I was watching the movie by myself and I was just like, wow, the Joker won in the end. And I thought it was kind of genius. But then I go online to read about the ending because I have this horrible thing where after I see a movie, I spend like two hours watching interviews and reading articles. It's, it's a huge time suck. But I go online and read about the ending and it turns out that I'm totally wrong and have totally misunderstood the ending. Now here's where things get interesting. In the graphic novel, the final frame is more silhouetted, so it's actually debated that Batman is strangling the Joker in the end. But to me, you can clearly see that his hands are on his shoulders like two pals laughing, and this is pretty much backed up by the movie here. So reading on further, it seems that the consensus is that they both laugh at the joke, realizing that they are locked in this cat and mouse game in a never ending cycle, and uh, they're never going to escape it. And then some people say there are police sirens and the Joker is hauled off once again, probably only to inevitably escape at some point. And as I dig through more articles, it seems that this is kind of the fully agreed upon ending. And um, if this is actually the ending, then it's actually more underwhelming than the preceding film was. So it's kind of a huge disappointment to me. I don't know, even though I've been reading tons about it and kind of recognize that my interpretation of the ending is pretty much patently wrong, I still kind of like it better. And I think I'm going to pretend that's how it was meant to end. The killing joke, Batman finally losing to the Joker once and for all. So. The movie, I didn't love it, but that one moment when I thought that the Joker had beaten the Batman and I had that authentic feeling, I loved that. And then it was stripped away from me pretty much immediately, but I'm going to cling to that authentic moment when I thought that the Joker had finally bested the Bat once and for all. All with one killing joke. <laughs>